There will never be another iPhone quite like the iPhone X. It may in fact end up representing the final major upgrade we will ever see. As smartphones continue to get greater and greater every year, one does have to ask the question, just how good can they get? While we may not yet know the answer, there's no question the current era in smartphone history began with the launch of the iPhone X in the November of 2017, being the first iPhone to remove the home button and bring that gorgeous edge-to-edge -edge OLED design. And believe it or not, this phone came out five years ago, or at least we'll be hitting that mark later this year. The iPhone 10 might look pretty darn similar to the newest iPhones, but there have been a lot of changes to the internals, raising the question. Just how strong is this phone for general use so many years later? Hey, how's it going? I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and the iPhone 10 is one of my favorite iPhones. And I'm happy to say that even though it is aging, and there's nothing that can be done about that, as a phone, it still holds its own, and in many ways performs up to the standard you'd expect from a phone that once cost $1,000 if that was almost five years ago. So today, let's review the iPhone X and how it holds up in 2022. As always, timestamps will be in the description below if you would like to skip ahead. We're going to be starting this by talking about how the phone performs today, whether current owners of the device should potentially upgrade, and even how much it would cost you on the used market. We'll then move into the actual review portion and look at the photography and hardware of how the iPhone X holds up. So for starters, if you're using the iPhone X right now, should you invest in an upgrade? Well, maybe, maybe not. I know, very helpful, but it really does depend on your personal situation. In short, the factors that are most likely to leave you wanting more probably will revolve around the battery life and photography. These are two aspects more recent iPhones have massively improved upon in recent years. And with the iPhone X being almost five years old, for a lot of people, it probably is very much struggling in the battery department. If it's really bad for you, you might need to get it replaced. You can check your battery health by going to settings, battery, battery health, and that percentage there is the amount of the original battery capacity your phone can still hold. Once you're in the mid to low 80s, you may notice pretty poor battery life. And once you're at and under 80%, there's a very good a chance you'll start to experience performance issues and or random shutdowns. All cell phone batteries degrade over time, and even if the phone has only been lightly used over the span of a few years, it still may be time for a battery replacement. This is a service that Apple will do for $70, which isn't too bad for something that often can breathe new life into your device. Of course, the iPhone X's battery was never particularly great in the first place, and something like the iPhone 13 Pro absolutely blows it out of the water, even just using Apple's own compare feature on their website. According to them, the iPhone X gets up to 13 hours of video playback, whereas the only slightly larger, and four years newer, iPhone 13 Pro will net up to 22 hours of video playback. That's pretty darn insane. If you want to be more fair to the iPhone X, even the iPhone 13 mini, which is a small phone, will get you 17 hours of video playback. And the third generation iPhone SC, which is the cheapest phone Apple currently sells, will apparently get you 15 hours. These numbers won't directly translate to real life use, but they do serve well as some context for how much better newer iPhones have gotten, and in my opinion, I think it makes a new iPhone worth it just for that feature alone, but just because newer phones are better doesn't mean the iPhone 10 is somehow horrible for you personally. It may be performing just fine, maybe you only lightly use the phone, or even moderately. If that's not you, then a newer iPhone probably will be a good choice. Which newer iPhone would be the best to upgrade to from the iPhone 10 if you do want to upgrade? Well, that's kind of a tough one, and at the moment, I would go with the iPhone 13 Pro. The iPhone 13 or 13 mini are decent options as well, but the 13 Pro or 13 Pro Max gets you the high refresh rate display. Everything's a lot smoother, a lot nicer. It feels like a real upgrade. Or you could wait a little while and go for something like the iPhone 14 Pro. But of course, you're looking at a pretty hefty investment for any of those phones. And ultimately, the iPhone 10 does still hold up pretty well right now, even if it can struggle in battery life. And the other category I mentioned the iPhone 10 has aged in was photography. And that's no surprise, given that phones will always keep getting better year over year. Since the iPhone 10, there have been some pretty big camera improvements. That being said, it can still take great photos and it depends on your personal situation, as all of this always does. If you find yourself dissatisfied with the picture quality, that's a one thing. But otherwise, I don't see the harm in using the iPhone 10 a bit longer, perhaps until the iPhone 14 comes out or beyond. And that's because everything else about this phone is still pretty darn amazing, especially with that age taken into account. The design is gorgeous, the display is almost on par with the newest iPhones with OLED and about the same pixel density. The only big difference is the refresh rate, and that's only on the 13 Pro at the moment. Performance is still quite spiffy and quite fast. Apple's A11 Bionic 
tech chipset might be older, but it's very much up to the task of running your apps and games with ease. Battery health is a factor there, so keep that in mind. And if your phone is bogged down, pretty full in storage, it could be a bit slower. But for me here, it's felt pretty darn good. And because Apple is ridiculous with updates, I'd expect like two more major software updates, so it could even go further, which is absurd. The phone as is in 2022 is not just a usable experience, but I would say a pretty nice experience, honestly, at least for the right person. Everything just kind of works, and that's what you want. Everyone's needs are different, and that's important to hit home here because ultimately these types of decisions are going to be up to you. My father's been using the iPhone 10 since 2018, and it's been working great for him. He uses it to take tons of photos, and he's had really no complaints over the last few years. The only thing is I think he's not huge on the battery life, but he's like a lot of people. The iPhone is a tool for him, and it's a tool that's still doing its job very well. The phone has held up about as well as you could hope for from any 2017 smartphone. And I don't think you could find any competing device on the Android side that's aged even half as well, especially when it comes to the software side of things. But really design too, because again, this looks so very much similar to even the best iPhones out today. So what about those of you looking to possibly buy an iPhone 10, looking at the used market? Maybe you're still on an iPhone 6S or something and want to upgrade to the edge to edge design and you want to save as much money as you can in doing so. Well, if we look at eBay for the iPhone 10, we can see it hovering for around the price of 200 to 250 dollars American and 64 gigabytes used or refurbished. For around 200 bucks or even lower, I did see a bit lower in some cases, I'd say the value is definitely there if you're someone comfortable with buying used or refurbished. And so all this being said, let's take a little bit of a closer look at the phone. So we'll look at the camera here and then we'll talk about the design hardware and all of that good stuff. Again, timestamps, description, you get the picture. But speaking of pictures, <laughs> I have good and bad news here. The iPhone 10 is absolutely absolutely still capable of taking a great photo, and some of the photos I took back in the day when I was using the phone regularly still impressed me. But ultimately, it's still a five-year-old smartphone camera, and so it's limited by the technology of its time. In daylight conditions, outdoors, the photography really shines with surprisingly solid HDR and warm coloring, producing really nice to look at images that would honestly look pretty good on any social media page today. For specifics, of course, we have two camera lenses on the back, one wide and one telephoto, and both being 12 megapixels. While these won't offer the crazy range of the modern three lens setup, the telephoto lens giving two times zoom is still really nice to have, and it gives us the ability to take portrait mode photos. You can see the comparison between the wide and two times zoom here. There's often a noticeable drop off in quality with the telephoto, and it doesn't handle low light as well as the wide, but again, it's nice to have, and it can take a great photo in the right conditions. Now, one thing I really don't miss from my iPhone 10 and older iPhones was that portrait mode. But what do you mean, Josh? This is a pretty good photo. Well, I would agree, but the problem is for every good portrait mode photo I got with this phone, there was like another five bad ones. Now it doesn't help my brother here was like one and a half, two years old, and two year olds tend to move around constantly, but I do really appreciate how much more consistent smartphone cameras have gotten. Even so, as long as you take a good few photos, odds are at least one of them will turn out all right, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Some of my favorite photos ever taken were done so with my iPhone 10, but you may have noticed that I'm mostly showing photos that were taken outdoors during the day and there's a reason. Unfortunately, the iPhone 10 does not have any kind of night mode, which was introduced with the 2019 iPhone 11 and 11 Pro, and it does really struggle in lower light situations. Anything from outside at night to even just indoors if lighting isn't plentiful. This photo here of my brother is absolutely fantastic, but the picture itself isn't exactly the highest quality. While it captures the moment just fine, it's a picture that's very much from a five-year-old smartphone taken indoors. I don't know what the context was for this photo of my buddy back in the day, but but even with the lighting hanging above him, the picture is a grainy mess, and you get the idea. The iPhone 10 is more than capable of taking really good photos, but ideally you'll need an abundant amount of light. iPhones have massively improved on this in recent years, as have all smartphones in general, but no surprise here, 2017 smartphone, 2017 smartphone camera. In this old shot I got back in the December of 2017, it's a good example of the range the telephoto gives, but it's also just a cool photo because if you zoom in, I believe that deer actually appears to be blind in the one eye there. I completely forgot I took these photos, and that's something really nice about the modern smartphone. Not only was this photo in my iCloud photos, but coming across it again, it's just a decent photo in general. Not perfect, but good. And we're at the point now where even five-year-old phones still took photos that are pretty darn decent. It's of course once you get into those lower light situation that the newer tech will shine, but even then, the iPhone 10 is solid enough to capture the moment, even if it's not the prettiest. But uh, video. Video is an area I would say the iPhone 10 actually holds up quite well in. It can record 4K 60, which is great. And as you can see here, the stabilization is extremely solid, even if I'm moving around a good bit. iPhones have been doing video very well for years, and the 
the iPhone 10 is no exception. The selfie camera has not aged quite as well, but it's not bad, and it's basically equivalent to the 2018 iPhone XS, if that makes any difference for you. We got 7 megapixels, and this is a fine selfie. Good enough for me, and we can also take a portrait selfies as well, which was a nice new feature at the time, thanks to the addition of the depth sensing that came with Face ID. Hopefully you're enjoying some of these selfies of my 17-year-old self. Back before YouTube had sucked out all the youth and hope from my naive eyes. Okay, I'm joking, but something I always smile at was how mind-blowing Face ID actually was to me back in the day, and I still absolutely love it today. Just looking at your phone for it to unlock for you is extremely convenient, and it also gave us the most important feature to hit smartphones within the past 10 years. An emoji. Yeah, these were silly, but when I first got my iPhone 10, that's what everyone at school wanted to try out. It's like showing off the phone, I'm like, look how good the display is, and everyone's like, does it do an emoji though? But getting back on track here, the camera overall certainly feels its age, but that's not necessarily a terrible thing, because luckily for us, 2017 smartphones, honestly, not that bad for camera quality. And with especially well-lit photos outside, the iPhone 10 can most definitely still take a great shot. Without any doubt, the best aged aspect of the iPhone 10 is the design, as it established the norm for Apple's smartphones throughout the past half decade. The edge-to-edge -edge OLED panel with a notch for Face ID gives that now iconic Apple look we've all become so accustomed to. And while the notch has finally gotten smaller with the 13 Pro and very well could change later this year with the iPhone 14 Pro, the truth is, from the front, any average user wouldn't be able to tell between this phone and the latest and greatest iPhones being sold today. Because of this, it has aged fantastically, and that display is gorgeous, producing true blacks, vibrant colors, and a sharp, crisp image even better than the iPhone XR, 11, and the two iPhone SEs that have come since the iPhone X. This isn't a large phone, mind you. The screen is 5.8 inches diagonally, and the phone itself is approximately the same size as the iPhone 8 or current iPhone SE, just with the thin bezels and no home button. The iPhone 10 is one of the few iPhones since the iPhone 6 in 2014 to not offer a larger size option, but that would come along the next year with the iPhone XS Max and its 6.5 inch display, along with of course the iPhone XS for those who preferred the smaller screen. And it's not like it's that small a phone, just a bit smaller than the average nowadays. Flipping the device over, we see the glossy glass back and stainless steel frame, which harkens back to the iPhone 4 from 2010. No complaints there, I absolutely loved that design back then and I still love it today. There's the new for the time vertical camera bump, and we also have the curved edges versus the now flat sides we have. While myself, I'm more of a fan of the flat sides that were made iconic on the iPhone 5 line, the curved edges are very comfortable in the hand and look amazing still, without a doubt. This is one of the most beautiful smartphones ever made, in my humble opinion, as it brings so many classic iPhone elements together and mixes it with that modern new design. We even only have two colors just like the iPhones of old in space gray or silver, and the iPhone iPhone XS would bring a gold option the next year. Hardware-wise, the iPhone X showed that sometimes you can judge a book by its cover, having absolutely top-of-the-line specs for 2017 that even hold up pretty well today. The Apple A11 Bionic chipset was extremely powerful and is still very capable, and we also have 3 gigabytes of RAM, which sounds like a small number, but iOS has always focused strongly on the optimization of software so it doesn't hinder the device. Running through the basics of the UI and playing games, using social media, multitasking, whatever you're doing, it gives a smooth, near-flawless iOS experience, and I honestly couldn't feel any lag here at all, just maybe a small bit in the animations when I first turned on the device, and just after I had updated it to the most recent version of iOS. As stated earlier, Apple is the best when it comes to keeping old phones supported and up-to-date, and so we can expect at least a couple more versions of iOS, if not more, and I wouldn't think this phone should ever feel particularly slow even a few years down the road. Gone are the days of tech moving so quickly that even a phone a couple generations behind could barely handle the new updates. The CPUs from Apple mixed with their performance-focused updates have kept phones even as old as the 2015 iPhone 6S supported and fairly speedy long past their expected expiry dates. And it's because of this, iPhone 10 owners shouldn't have to worry about the future of their device. What you may want to worry about is the two main factors we've discussed for most of this video. Battery life and camera quality. The camera might be livable, but sooner or later that battery may not be. It comes down to how you use the phone and whether whether or not it works for you. At the end of the day, the iPhone 10 is not only a capable smartphone in 2022, but a positive experience. This is a phone that is aged really, really well, and it's kept worthy of its title of the first mainstream $1,000 smartphone. This has always been one of my favorite iPhones, if not my all-time favorite, as it was the first one I had ever bought brand new back in 2017, as I thought of it as an investment into this YouTube channel. And since then, of course, I've lucked into turning this into my living, which is absolutely unbelievable, and I can't Thank you all enough for watching my content.
content, whether it's just this video or you've been around since the beginning. It's been fun, and I can't help but feel a bit nostalgic whenever talking about the iPhone 10. I'm so glad to see it's holding up as well as it is, even if it isn't without its flaws. And so I'd love to hear from all of you. Are any of you still using the iPhone 10 right now? How's it working? Is battery life doing okay? Make sure you leave a comment down below. Very curious to hear how this phone is holding up for everyone. Of course, my dad still has one and he likes it, but he's also not someone who does a whole lot with their phone. So yeah, I'm just very curious to hear what everyone has to say. If you found this video interesting or helpful, maybe consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more content just like this. You can follow me over on my socials if you feel like being a cool person. With all that being said, thank you so much for watching. Once again, I really do appreciate it. I'm Josh from 91 Tech, and I will see you all next time. This is the future of iPhone. What we see here is going to set probably the next three generations of iPhone, two to three generations of iPhone. And then eventually they're just gonna probably get rid of the notch altogether and we'll have a new generation of iPhone.